Everybody, welcome aboard here, Sports Talk Nation. Michael Cohen here with you, and yes, it is now the day before NFL free agency begins. By this time Monday, uh, the legal tampering now begins, and of course, official signings can become official by Wednesday. But we've already seen a flurry of moves, buddy, in the NFL ready. Mostly at the quarterback position, of course, Aaron Rodgers. We know he's going to come back, even though he claimed he didn't sign an extension, even though there was a report that he signed an extension for fifty million dollars a year. Of course, some of the other big moves. Corresponding to that, Russell Wilson going from Seattle to Denver. As it uh, looks like Seattle's certainly on the path to trying to rebuild. Bobby Wagner also released from the Seahawks, their, their uh, all-pro linebacker. You have uh, Carson Wentz going to the Was- to the almost said Washington football team, the Washington Commanders. So he's going to be over there now. And as we sit here with all this news, Rodgers coming back to the Packers, Russell Wilson going to the Seahawks, Carson Wentz going to the Commanders. We have the biggest news of the day coming up on Sunday night. And that, of course, is that Tom Brady is, in fact, unretiring. He is indeed coming back. Oh, boy. Just when you thought you were safe, and the, just when you thought it was safe, it pulls you right back in. There's the post right there on social media. 23rd season now for Tom Brady as he comes back to quarterback the Buccaneers. I know there was a lot of rumors, uh, you know, that the Buccaneers could have been in on Deshaun Watson who, uh, of course, got past all of his legal troubles. But uh, now, forget that. Tom Brady's back in Tampa Bay, and I'm going to mention, you know, I was going to talk about one of the free agents the Jets could pursue was Ryan Jensen, the center for the Bucks. Could probably forget that now, too, with, uh, with, with Brady back in the fold. Maybe. We'll see. But that is a big deal. Uh, obviously, with Brady back in the fold in Tampa Bay, they're going to be now instant favorites in the division again and probably instant favorites in the NFC again. So... Here we go. Did anybody really think this guy was going to stay retired? I mean, think about that. First. Anybody really think this guy was going to stay retired for more than, more than what he did? Two months, that's it. He's like, you know what? I'm tired of caulking the shower. I'm tired of sitting here, uh, you know, doing nothing. I'm coming back. All this stuff, MLB news, NFL news. I'm back, man. I'm back. Come on. So tired of it. So there's going to be a lot of moves. There have been a lot of moves already as far as the quarterback position is concerned. You know, it's the, the position, the creme de la creme for that matter, as far as what people worry about in the NFL. But locally here, with the, let's just start with here with the New York Jets. This is about a team that's trying to build around what they started to establish last season. Of course, with the quarterback, young quarterback in Zach Wilson. Uh, they have a couple of other young pieces like Michael Carter, uh, head coach in his second year. And it seems like there are a lot of fans that feel that this there, there's going to be an extra added pressure on Joe Douglas to get it done and get it done right big time this year. And understandable, because this will be technically Douglas's fourth season at the helm running the Jets for that matter. And there were a lot of Jet fans who got upset when they didn't go out there and trade for Amari Cooper, who was traded from the Cowboys to the Browns for second-day picks, like fifth, sixth-round picks. And a lot of Jet fans lost their minds, saying, how could the Jets not go out there, be aggressive, and bring in Cooper? But the fact is this, is that as talented as a player as Cooper is, there's been reports that he's kind of on the downside a little bit, has shown decline in production, especially last year with the Cowboys, and Still has three years, $60 million on his contract, and that would have been a cap hit of $20 million. That's a big cap hit for a team that, while the Jets do have $48 million in cap space, they still have a long way to go. They're not a player away from being a big-time contender just yet. And it's it's not like they're in a situation the Browns are. The Browns are desperate. All right, The Browns were expected to be a playoff team this past season after being in the playoffs the year before in 2020. And this year, past year, had a year where everyone thought the Browns would be a playoff team and ended up being the other team from Ohio who ended up going to the playoffs and the Super Bowl in the Bengals. So there's more pressure on the Browns to go out there and make a big splash, which is what they did trying to get Amari Cooper in there. The Jets are still trying to build something here. So I'm not going to lose my mind over the Jets not getting Cooper, but there's also the idea that, hey, look, since the Seahawks look like they're going to be blowing things up, you know, will they will the Jets be a player for DK Metcalf? I would love to see the Jets go out there and get a player like DK Metcalf. He would be a game changer. I don't know if the Seahawks, Seahawks are going to trade him. And I saw, I saw a report somewhere on here that um, 
the Seahawks weren't interested in trading him. I think it was I think it was fan sided. I think I saw it. That they, it was a report that they weren't going to trade him. I know he has two years left in his contract. It's kind of hard to uh, two years left in the contract, and of course they'll try to franchise him after that. He's a talented player. I can't imagine. I mean, anything's possible, but I can't imagine the Seahawks letting him go, even though they part ways with Russell Wilson. So from that standpoint, where do the Jets go from here? And there's still a lot. Of, it's, it's a deep pool of receivers here this offseason. You also have the draft coming up as well. What are the Jets going to do to try to get some help here for Zach Wilson? Uh, now, of course, from the draft standpoint, a lot of people like Trey McBride, who's a tight end from Colorado State. Will he be a guy second? It will be, you know, second round pick that could end up being picked up by the Jets. That's a possibility. Uh, but as far as the free agency is concerned, you know, one name that I've seen get, you know, circulated a lot is is Allen Robinson of the Chicago Bears, who has been around uh, and again, kind of like Cooper having had a down year last year. Uh, only 410 yards receiving was coming off of a year before where he had over, you know, almost 1200 1250 yards, 1250 yards receiving and uh, six touchdowns this year. He is six foot two. He's a big target. He is a free agent. Do the Jets feel they can go out there and bring him in to be a piece that could help try to that that they could that could help this young quarterback develop? And that's what's really about is trying to find the right pieces to put around the quarterback, whether it be on the defensive side or on the offensive side. But as far as wide receivers are concerned for the Jets, I think the one name that's going to be very intriguing. I, out of all this, is going to be Braxton Berrios. Do the Jets bring him back? They've had discussions with his agent as far as what we, what I have heard and read, but nothing seems imminent as far as getting a deal done. I would hate to see the Jets lose Berrios because he can do so many different things. He's a jack of all trades, can do a lot of big things for the Jets on special teams. He's a good possession receiver, good on third down. I would think, plus, Zach Wilson loves having a the guy there in the slot. I think he's a very important player the Jets have to bring back. If they don't, I think that would be a disappointment in a lot of ways. It really would be. And it would be even more of a disappointment if he were, let's say, to end up staying in the AFC East, but with somebody like New England or Buffalo or Miami or something like that. So I think from the Jets' standpoint, of players, of their own players that are free agents, I think he is, to me anyway, a priority they have to bring him back. But also another big part of the Jets' offseason is going to be, again, defense. Secondary is going to have to be improved. Tyron Matthew, another big name out there for uh, safety with, of course, with Arizona, Kansas City, was uh, part of the Kansas City Super Bowl team a couple years ago. He's a free agent. He is pushing 30. He is going to be 30. Does he want to come to the Jets? And are the Jets willing to pay big bucks for him to be not just a, a hard-hitting safety there for a team that needs one, but to be a culture changer, to be a leader in the clubhouse, is he willing to go from being on a Super Bowl team in Kansas City to being a team that's really not quite there just yet as far as just trying to get to the playoffs for that matter? That's going to be very interesting to find out. Uh, it, would, it would be a huge boon for the Jets if they could get somebody like Tyron Matthew. I just don't know if they're, we'll, see, if we'll see if they're able to uh, you know, make an agreement there and pull the trigger on a player like that. Uh, that said, there's other players out there. I see here listed, you know, Carlton Davis, T DJ Reed. These are two other free agents at corner that could be possible for this team. And then, of course, you go. I think what the Jets are going to do very heavily in this in this in, coming up here is they're going to be very heavy on the draft. Joe Douglas relies on the draft a lot, as we've seen in the last couple of years. And I think with those picks, you got the extra picks that he got from Seattle. I think they're going to try to answer a lot of their issues. At wide receiver, for example, and in the secondary through the draft. Just my own two cents for that matter, but we'll see what happens um, as far as the New York Jets are concerned. But they are certainly, you know, getting a lot of uh, a play, a lot of attention here uh, as we move towards free agency. A lot, of, you know, rumblings about what are they going to do, to try to improve this football team, and in 2022 as, as the off season really starts to kick into high gear, uh, and of course the Giants. Right there with them, new head coach, obviously, Brian Dable, Joe Shane, new general manager. They're, it sounds like they're going to stick with Daniel Jones for another year. There's the rumors that they're going to you know, pot, you know, know, potentially looking at Mitchell Trubisky to be the backup quarterback for this team. Uh, I know there were some Giant fans online on Twitter saying, you know, let's let's go out and get Sean Watson. They're probably not going to do that. They're going to stick with probably, they're going to stick with most likely stick with Jones for another year, and they're probably going to go with something a safe bet, as, you know, as far as the public relations standpoint is concerned, because that's part of this. 
by going out and getting somebody like Trubisky, for that matter, to be the backup. The Giants have a lot of issues. It's Again, like the Jets, they, their issues go beyond just one position, for that matter. And they have a lot of work to do. And the Giants, unlike the Jets, who have $49 million in cap space, the Giants don't have much cap space at all. So they're going to have to be very creative in how they make a lot of their moves. Uh, they may even have to you know, try to trade some players and eat some money, for that matter, as we move in through this offseason. The Giants are... You know, the Jets are probably a little closer to being a playoff team right now than the Giants are. Giants are just starting to get this rebuild moving in, 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 in potentially in the right direction for that matter. So it's going to be interesting to see how things play out here. Again, free agency kicks off this week. Monday, it's going to get crazy. Uh, anything big that happens, we'll br- get, you, get it to you here on the Sports Talk Nation as soon as we possibly can. Remember, folks, like and subscribe. Comment below. What do you think about this offseason? Who would you like to see the Jets or the Giants go out there and try to get? We'll talk about it next year on the Sports Talk Nation. We'll talk to you next time. Mm-hmm.